We are Spikes. We're developing a new way of delivering electrical stimulation to the brain to improve motor function after stroke. I want you to imagine for a second what it would feel like if you woke up one morning and you couldn't move half your body. You couldn't speak, maybe you couldn't even smile. These are all symptoms of stroke. A specific motor deficit caused by a lack of blood flow and oxygen to the brain. Unfortunately, strokes are incredibly common. In the United States alone, there's one stroke every 40 seconds, and it's one of the primary causes of long-term disability in this country. Every year, 320,000 people develop long-term motor disabilities because of stroke, and this adds up to 3.5 million people living in the United States with these chronic motor deficits. They affect basic functions of daily living. We're developing a new solution for this problem. If you think about how the normal brain works, our motor cortex sends signals to our spinal cord to help us move. After a stroke, part of the brain is damaged. Many of these signals are missing. But not all of the signals are missing, and this is the key point. We want to deliver targeted electrical stimulation, physiologically based, to optimize the function of the existing neural circuits. You might ask, how come this hasn't been done before? And indeed, other companies and other people have tried to deliver electrical stimulation to improve motor deficits after a stroke. They've used the following basic approach. A patient gets a device implanted. They go to their doctor. The doctor, doctor turns the stimulator on for a period of 20, 40 minutes, even up to an hour. And then they turn it off, and the patient goes back home. We see two basic problems with this approach. First of all, patients don't want to feel better when they're in the doctor's office. They want to improve their motor function when they're at home, when they're doing things. Second, the brain doesn't work on the time scale of minutes or hours. It works on the time scale of milliseconds to seconds. We've developed a new stimulation approach. We call it iStimmed, intelligent stimulation technology to improve motor deficits. The three basic fundamental new things we're trying to do are, first of all, target stimulation in a physiologically relevant manner. So on the time scale of the way the brain works, from milliseconds to seconds, using parameters, physiological targets, that we've identified as being very important for motor recovery after stroke. And finally, the stimulator should be autonomously controlled. You shouldn't have to decide when to turn it off and on. The, the device should decide for you. The IP, we believe, covers the algorithm, which I, I was just describing. In addition, in addition, a new platform, a new device that we've been developing, which is really optimized for delivering the stimulation to improve motor function after stroke. And importantly, we're using an approach that doesn't involve deep brain stimulation or penetrating electrodes. We've been testing this approach out in a preclinical rodent model of stroke, and we generally find about 70 to 75 improvement in motor function in these animals, which is a highly, very clinically and functionally meaningful benefit in this preclinical model. If you think about the overall device space market, on the one hand, you have clinical device companies that are primarily focused on Parkinson's and epilepsy. They develop deep brain penetrating invasive electrodes for these disorders. On the other hand, you have your uh, non-invasive, basically consumer market space devices that really don't have the capabilities of delivering physiologically targeted stimulation. In these ways, we believe we're very unique. We're, on the one hand, less invasive than the deep brain penetrating electrode companies. We're intelligent or smart stimulation focused. And we're the only company right now that's developing, is developing a smart stimulation approach for stroke at this mo moment in time. We see a huge market opportunity in stroke. Now, if you take the device, we're currently pegged our device to be about $10,000. This is in the ballpark of what the other clinical brain stimulation device companies are charging for their devices. If you think of the total market opportunity, of course, it's huge, but we don't really think all 3.5 million people are going to get a device implanted. We're really focused first and foremost on the new strokes. People who have had a stroke in the last year, we've identified them about six to eight months on as having these chronic motor deficits, and that represents a 3.5 billion marketplace. Based on some of our preclinical evidence, we particularly believe we can target maybe the middle third, those that have significant but not the most serious motor deficits. 
which represents a target market of about a billion dollars. Of course, it's not enough this, in this day and age to just develop a better mousetrap. We have to develop a better, better mousetrap that's cheaper. We believe our device really has a clear value for insurance companies who we believe will be our primary payers. So currently, when patients develop chronic motor deficits, they continue to get rehabilitation therapies, which costs Medicare, so these are based on Medicare costs, about $7,000 per year. Uh, studies show, have looked at least for the first five years and show that patients continue to get annual rehabilitation therapy. So for somebody with chronic motor deficits, they're spending about three and a half billion dollars just on the rehabilitation part of their motor deficits. Our model, based on the price points that we talked about, would cost the same 100,000 patients about $1.7 billion. We're assuming they would still get about the, the first year's worth of rehabilit rehabilitation treatments, but after that, the benefit from our device would be enough where they don't really have to go in anymore. So using these metrics, we project a savings of even, even using these metrics up to $2 billion in these patients. Our business model is based on the other clinical de medical device stimulation companies that I discussed. And we really see ourselves as partnering with neurologists, rehabilitation specialists, and neurosurgeons who would serve to both uh, provide referrals for the device and implant the device and continue to manage the, the device after implantation. Based on the value proposition I just discussed, we've, we feel that insurance companies could be convinced to reimburse for this. And because we're the only company at present that's really developing a device and approach for stroke, we imagine we could partner with some of the other medical device companies out there if they're interested in some of the different aspects of distribution or even help with the engineering part of it. So in terms of our next two years, we see a few different key inflection points in terms of risk and value. So of course, we're working with the UCSF patent office to submit the IP. We are hopeful that this will happen over, over the next few months, and um, that would be a target of sometime in May. In March, uh, uh, we plan over the next year. So the main risk and value proposition, the main risk here is, does our preclinical data translate to clinical data? And this is true for any animal model and any kind of preclinical data. We're actually, with partners we have at UCSF, planning to start testing out our algorithmic approach, not with a miniaturized device, but with uh, a more different type of device in a lab setting. But we're re we'll really be testing out, does this al algorithm really help actual stroke patients? You're out of time. Thank you very much. This is our team and mentors, and this is the summary. <laughs>